Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends, here in New York at the ETF Boot Camp, and I'm here with Andy McCormick, who heads up ETF trading at Wallet Beth. Andy, great hey, to have you. Thank you, good to be here as always. You guys just had great a event. powerful panel on liquidity. Yep. Uh, liquidity has been a very important subject in the last mm -hmm. 30 days. Uh, no better person to talk to about trading pros and cons, and most importantly, what are the key important things an advisor needs to remember when you're placing orders. Right, perfect. Well, I think, I think we'll jump right in by making sure that we explain, especially in the advisor set, um, that understanding what liquidity is, yeah. okay? Uh, and then we can talk a little bit about market structure. But first understand that when you are investing in a product that's an ETF that's listed, rely on the, an understanding of the asset class's liquidity versus just the ETF's liquidity. So if you're trading a product that is, appears to not be liquid on the screen, but is the S&P 500, equally weighted, you can expect to get a good execution and some tight liquidity. If you are trading a Turkish junk bond ETF, don't expect tight liquidity. Yeah. So start with some expectations before you get involved. And then some of the basics are this, understand it's not a mutual fund anymore. You know, it's, that is a very basic thing to say, but I run into advisors that don't realize that, right? They're getting out of their mutual fund exposure, maybe dipping their toes into the water for ETFs the first time. So they're thinking, okay, I'll sell my mutual fund on the close, and I'll buy my ETF on the close, and that way I market neutral, which yeah. isn't correct in theory. Correct, yeah. However, one of the first mistakes is not understanding the, the potential pitfalls of a market on close order, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, one of the things is you, you're dealing with a fragmented market in today's world, right? So, if you're an advisor, uh, you're used, most likely giving your order to custodian. Okay, so what you want to do is obviously avoid market orders, okay, uh, because we're dealing with not all ETFs are penny wide and 200,000 yeah. yeah. shares, right? So if, if it's a liquid ETF, I would still rather you see put a marketable limit order in, which is just a couple cents above the offer, a couple cents below, but it will get, the market is designed to protect you as an investor and not trade through a market on the screen. Yeah. So at the advisor level, a marketable limit order will get done, right? Other things to consider are, again, like I said, market on close orders, which don't take full advantage of the liquidity across the screen, you want to avoid those. Yeah. We spent a lot of time in the panel talking about market on open orders, right? Yeah. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the liquidity of ETF is as liquid as its underlying asset class. If the asset class is not open, the ETF will have some potential width to the spread. Yeah. So if on the, the day uh, a few weeks ago on that Monday when we had no liquidity and we had that thousand point down day, which was a lot of causes, but your people were trading ETFs where the stocks were not open and that causes a, a wide variance in pricing. So, Especially putting in market orders or stop loss orders. So yeah. those are just some, some basic things to consider as well. Um, as you get bigger, you have more options, right? And it's the same thing, if, if you're going to work in order, so if you're a general strategy, you've traded these before and you're an advisor, and you want to say, here's a basic tip, okay, I, I don't like to pick my spot in the market. I don't know if the market's going to be lower at 3 p.m. than it is at 10 a.m., so I don't want to guess. Yeah. Okay? So then you do what would be a working order or an algo or a VWAP order yeah. over the day and submit that kind of order. Uh, that's fine if the ETF is liquid. So if your order is a certain percentage of the average daily volume, which is called ADV, which is a good tip to look at for liquidity as well, you're looking at ADV and your order is you know, one one thousandth of ADV, then go ahead and put that VWAP order in. Mm -hmm. But it's an important lesson to know that and this does occur at the advisor level. If you are moving, let's say, a 5,000 share order or a 10,000 share order into an ETF that trades 2,000 shares a day, VWAP is not going to be your best option because you're simply, again, like any other catalyst, telling the trading public, hey, I'm buying this ETF all day long and it's much bigger than any other order that's hit this ETF and it's just kind of what I would call, what we like to call information leakage, right? right. You want to kind yep. of be responsible for trading correctly and, and appropriately. So in those scenarios, a VWAP wouldn't be appropriate and you would seek the source of risk block. Right, and so a, whole bunch of a couple other things is, and most advisors that are trading ETFs tend to be pretty tech savvy. Yep. And most platforms, brokerage platforms, have uh, systems where they can put in these limit Correct. orders and the whole thing can work. However, it doesn't mean you can't pick up the phone and call the trading desk uh, at your at your broker dealer Correct. that you work with, and they sometimes will call folks like you and right. say, "Hey, listen, what can you do? Keep you on the phone, keep the the advisor on the phone, work out the price based on what the current underlying value is right. of that security, and then you've got a deal and you're done." Yeah, right? that's a great question. I'll, I'll give you four channels 
The first channel is yourself, yeah. right, as an advisor. Some of this information is easier than you think, okay? If you have a Bloomberg, great. Yeah. But Yahoo Finance will tell you what's called INAV, intraday net asset value. You're probably all very familiar with net asset value of a mutual fund. So the intraday net asset value is simply the calculation of the underlying constituents, and it's calculated every 15 seconds, yeah. which is fine. It's not great for a hyper trader, but 15 seconds is more than enough time for your average advisor to get an understanding of what that ETF's worth. So you start with yourself as your first channel. Now, as you said, if you're in an environment where the market feels a little tricky, a little volatile, or you just simply feel outmatched by the product or the asset class, you have three more channels, okay? The issuer themselves offer support, specific support and it did not exist for a mutual fund because it didn't need to. So, so you the capital them, markets desk yeah. at State Street, Vanguard, yeah, yeah. BlackRock, WisdomTree, iShares, they will all provide you with guidance on how to implement your trade, which is a wonderful tool for ETFs that I would say is most ignored at the advisor level. Okay, good An point. An advisor yeah. can pick up the phone, call the 1-800 number, and tell them they want trade support. Yeah. The next channel would be if you're larger and have a relationship with a broker. Right, an outside ex ETF expert, such as myself or one of the many APs or market makers. That's probably more a scenario, again, if you're a bigger shop, but then you'll get right to an unobjective view and an expert in ETFs and would obviously be more relevant with a large order, or as I said, a smaller order in ETF that doesn't trade a lot. And as you mentioned, the last channel would be to pick up the phone to the person that represents you. That's why you're paying, right? Uh, even if it's $7.95 for Charles Schwab, it's not free, right? You're paying $7.95, you're entitled to say, hold on a second, I'm not just going to hit the buy and the limit button, I'm going to call customer support and have this order handled a different way. Certainly if you're an advisor, right, and you're representing an allocation to a thousand clients, there's a desk that handles that, yeah. that is usually the same desk that handles a special order care and some guidance on how to submit it. Great, Andy, perfect, awesome. uh, very succinct. We'll have you back again. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate Always it. Always a pleasure. Thank you.